Hello everyone and welcome back to Planet Zoo Franchise Mode. We are going to be doing kind of a mini-sode, but you know, I just want to do some quick developments in the West African Lion Enclosure. So I have created a cave, I flattened all the land that was in the actual circular lion pit that we had going on at the beginning of the series and I want to make some changes to it. I don't really like it, I think it's a bit too basic. And I've had an idea that I wanted to kick around and play about with. So we're going to make a cave here so that they've got somewhere to go in and hide that is kind of well obscured because the little thing that they had at first wasn't a lot of space in there and it was right in the middle of the habitat so it was taking up a lot of space. And fair enough they could climb on top of it where they had that scratching tree that they used quite often. But again I just think it had too much of a footprint on that main space and I didn't really like that. Another thing, our lovely albino male alpha lion is coming to an end of his lifespan, so unfortunately he has been released to a sanctuary uh, and the females have been released into the wild, so I have one little baby left. Uh, he's about to mature, so I'm going to get him a female. Uh, so we have a breeding pair in there again and they'll be about the same age, so they can deliver us quite a few offspring hopefully. And uh, yeah, that'll be uh, pretty fun. I'm quite excited to be moving on with that. So um, we're currently playing around with these rocks and just forming up the cave system. It's going to be very similar to the last kind of video that I did where I just build up a nice little wall of rocks, copy paste, move them up, really like similar to the style that I'm normally used to. Uh, just because it's easy and this isn't going to have a lot in it I may put some vines and stuff on just to finish it off I want to do some finishing touches like I've said in a few other episodes uh, just to really get this main entrance area and the first few habitats that I've got in place and done and then I'm going to really like get that sorted and finished off before we move on to something else because I've got some big ideas that I want to kind of put a lot of effort into that I'm not going to talk about because I don't want to spoil it, but I'm um, planning some big stuff uh, for the zoo uh, that involve the actual stream river that runs from the large body of water right at the back of the zoo itself, coming all the way down to the Africa, wild Africa habitat. That lake's going to become a pretty big exhibit that I'm quite looking forward to getting down and designing but I refuse to do it until I finished this. So this was something that I done really quickly uh, it was kind of tagged onto another episode uh, so I thought it could do with a little bit of TLC and the idea I've had is to create a kind of almost Greek amphitheater. Uh, I was thinking about kind of uh, there was a game I used to play called Caesar and it was a uh, city builder of course it was because I play a lot of these types of games on the channel <laughs> where you were in charge of the Roman Empire and you could train up gladiators and train up your soldiers and stuff and you could also have them fight in an amphitheater where they would fight lions and you know I thought that would be a really cool thing to do obviously there's not going to be any fighting we're not going to be doing anything like that and um, I just wanted to make this kind of ruined almost Amphitheater. It's not going to be an exact representation of it or anything. I'm just kind of doing a little nod to that because I think the style's really nice and I think it would sit in quite nicely with this pit that we've got. So I did originally play around and just tried something that was a little bit more natural, but it still looked a little bit too boring and samey. And obviously I wanted to create this kind of like mini pride rock type thing like in The Lion King where they have somewhere to go up and gaze out over their surroundings even though they don't have a lot of surroundings here which is a shame and I do feel bad about that I'd love to give them a huge vast open habitat and that may come at some other point in the zoo's development but right now this is where they are and I'm quite happy with with that so there were a lot of changes in this the initial kind of opening stages of it I really don't like that these rocks are in this biome the grasslands biome and they have these desert rocks or the Sahara rocks. I think the colour contrast is really bad between the actual colour of the rock and grassland. It doesn't make a lot of sense. So yeah, we did a little bit of terrain painting and moving around and stuff. I put the scratching post up on top of that rock at first and decided I didn't like it. So we threw that gift box up there instead. And hopefully the lions will be attracted to the top of that rock to play with that box. 
I, I'm not really sure. I mean, I had noticed when we first brought in our new female, she was quite coy and shy, but uh, our new male, our new alpha, has kind of warmed to her, and I think they may have mated already by the end of this video. I can't quite remember. Anyway, we took all of that initial startup out, and then I was looking for something that I could create this seating area. Played around a little bit with stone pillars and stuff, and I really like these concrete plinth things that you can just move them into place and and that's great. So I tried doing that. They weren't sitting quite right. They kept going off at an angle and when I duplicated them it kind of looked a little bit of a mess. So this initial start, you'll see what I'm going for, but we eventually <laughs> move it out into some other random part of the zoo and then develop it there and then move in a completed piece back in. So the great thing about these is it's just really simple to put them together and then you just need to put a few different things in to create a, a bit of a contrast so that it doesn't look all samey like this one weird flat piece um so here we are just moving it in getting it onto some definitely flat ground <laughs> and then moving it back in so we're just making uh three steps basically we'll put them back in and then do a nice little half circle all the way around so it'll start at the cave where they sleep and end where the waterfall is and then we'll have a little stage area so that um, big rock that we've got we'll actually put that on a stage see how that looks uh, I did do a lot of messing around and some a lot of it didn't look quite right and there's still something about it that I'm kind of thinking is this missing just one little finishing touch maybe we could build a set or something uh, so that it kind of looks like there's a play or, or something you know what I, it reminds me of actually um in planet coaster there's those like pirate scenes and they kind of look like there's a little play or something i can't remember I, i'm pretty sure there is like a uh, there was a pack that came out where you could have entertainers and stuff and they would be part of something um so yeah it kind of reminded me of that that i wanted to kind of make something similar so when I first put these in, we did the loop all the way around to the halfway mark and it looked too small. I didn't really like what it looked like. It just kind of looked like I'd put in these slabs of concrete for no apparent reason. It didn't really look like an amphitheater. Like you certainly couldn't imagine hundreds of people sitting on those steps to actually watch something. And then I, I left it for a little bit to see if anything changed and then started designing a stage. And I thought maybe we could do kind of like a mosaic effect and maybe I could have used smaller pieces for this and that might have worked, but I didn't like this immediately. Um, I don't, there's something about the way that the uh, plaster, when you give it a different color like this, it doesn't, it doesn't appeal to me. So there's probably loads of other pieces that I could try out, but I wasn't feeling like trying out right now. I wanted to get a nice clean build done and yeah so instead of um doing what i eventually ended up doing with this habitat i thought right okay we'll just see if we can make a nice backdrop for it and get in some nice pillars because i want to make the staff entrance area a little bit more standoutish kind of like that's a, a a ground floor entrance to the amphitheater if you will um so <laughs> we're playing around with that and again the terrain in this lion habitat because of all the editing that i've done and all of the changing around and terraforming that i've done it's appalling it's not flat at all and i could just flatten it out i probably should have just flattened it out but i chose not to and i decided to make things more difficult for myself like i always bloody do so uh, i do all of this moving around of this item because i want to get it in place and get it nice and exact and then realize that my pillars have a slight lean forward to them so <laughs> oh dear well you know we live and learn so i probably should have learned 16 episodes ago but no here we are episode 17 still making the same mistakes <laughs> anyway it doesn't matter we got rid of them and actually it forced me to come up with a separate idea so we decided to go with square pillars get them all made up nice move them back into position and then i was guaranteed to have them flat because i don't mind them sinking into the earth a little bit that actually appeals to me i'd like that to happen what i don't want is for them to sink into the earth on an angle and make the entirety of the build skew <laughs> that's that's what i'm trying to avoid here but we got there in the end and it didn't take too long all in all i think the build time for this was about an hour and 15 minutes uh so pretty speedy to be quite honest i suppose we did have everything there in place already we just have that log wall background and things that we need to uh 
we do need to tidy that up a touch because there's still gaps between the log wall and the uh, path for the guests and I'd like to fill those in probably with just rocks or something or we may create something a little bit more in tune with the now classical theme of this build. So tried moving some stuff around and repositioning things, didn't work and then I just decided ah sod it, we'll, we'll do it out here and then we'll move this entire piece into position. And I think it looks pretty nice, it's uh, very basic but I'm only looking for basic here, I don't want to encroach too much on the territory in what is already a pretty small habitat. So we just need to manoeuvre these back into position and make sure there's no overlaps, get the archway put in right and this was the moment where I thought this doesn't quite look emphatic enough, shall we say. I want it to really stand out, despite the fact that it's just a small and basic build. I still want it to have something about it that would make guests go, oh, wow, look at that. And I remember I've been to um, Pompeii, and there's an old Roman theatre in Pompeii that is very similar to this style. And of course, there's the uh, huge... UNESCO World Heritage Site in uh, Greece. Uh, I can't remember the exact name of it. Um, yeah, I can't remember the name of it, but you know, it's a, it's a World Heritage Site. It is huge. It's absolutely huge. But obviously at the rise of like uh, Greek tragedy and uh, the theater in Rome and things like that, there were these smaller theaters popping up all over the place. And obviously we still have them right now in, in the UK. We've got some little tiny pop-up theatres and stuff that seat uh, smaller audiences and were for more um, n not famous plays of the time and things like that and uh, fringe theatre basically so uh, we're gonna call this a fringe Greek amphitheatre <laughs> does that make sense I don't know if that's even possible I think that actually defies the laws of of the the literary meaning of those words but you know never mind so we did move it up and then we did run into a few problems. I tried to take a shortcut, as I am often known to do, and just duplicate um, the whole piece itself, move it up, and then I was like, this is not going to work at all. So we took smaller sections, merged them into groups, duplicated them, and then moved them into position. We did end up taking off this little bit because I thought it cut far too much into the runoff from the waterfall. and I want to keep that nice and intact and not actually encroach on that too much. And then everything else just kind of fall, fell into place and it was just a case of moving and positioning stuff. And obviously it looks pretty bare and basic right now, but I think only like a few more pieces would just finish this off for what I want it to look because I don't want to go too over the top with it. And I think maybe on that top lip where the logs are sticking out a little bit, I could do a little bit of work there just to really finish that off. Maybe put something on the back running all the way around. Uh, we could potentially replace or run rocks uh, rock cladding up the back of it and that would just totally hide the log walls because they now do look a little bit out of place in this build now that we've kind of changed the color scheme and the theming of it it's lost that effect that it did have and this was always temporary i did always plan to come back and develop that so here we are just extending out the staff entrance and making sure that there's no imperfections and no um, clipping going on there we will probably tidy that up a little bit more put a bit of lighting in and things and, and maybe stick some things on the walls because it's very bare and you can still see some parts where the textures are kind of overlapping from the concrete pillars because these are only small pillars and there's a lot of them stuck together and it can look a little bit samey it's one of the reasons why sometimes I do like to use those bigger pieces because they do have a nice texture and when you put three or four of them together you get a much better effect than if you have three or four two by two pieces together that's where you kind of get the obvious you've duplicated this piece time and time again to create a wall here and it doesn't look quite right if that makes sense at all so here i i did put these in at first and i thought i don't think this looks quite right and then i abandoned that tried to have a think of what else we could do i was going to use these right at the beginning because i thought they had a nice pattern on them so i thought could i maybe use them and then they didn't work either and it it was a little bit difficult i i did get this one into position but it still it looked there was too much clipping going on it didn't look quite right i had a little look around see if there was anything else with a slope on it that i could use and ended up actually coming back to these because when you actually put them in and get them settled just right they actually don't look too bad i mean it's not amazing and it's certainly not my best work personally but 
it gives me the effect that I want to create with it, where you have this kind of almost divided seating so that people can go to their required seat, I suppose. I, I can't imagine they would have tickets back in ancient Greece. Certainly you wouldn't be able to go on StubHub and order a ticket for <laughs> the fall of Troy or something. Anyway, this was the, the uh, stage area, so I wanted to bring it out and leave like kind of a little gap in there. And then we put the rock kind of like breaking through. Um, I still don't know if I like this enough to actually keep it, and I may actually just get rid of the stage altogether. My other option was to use wood, as if this place had been refurbished at some point and had this building put in place and then had been repurposed again. So we kind of have that clash of the ancient architecture with a modern redevelopment that has then been repurposed yet again for the point of this zoo. But I'm, I'm not too bothered. I quite like this as it is. We did put some wooden flooring down, which would suggest that there'd been some development in the future to preserve this floor or whatever, because they didn't use wooden floor in the amphitheaters and stuff. It was all the stone and the marble and things like that. And yeah, I'm, I'm reasonably happy with it. I don't know if it looks quite right, and I don't know if it gives the effect that I quite like to see from it. So we may come back when I'm doing all of the little touch-ups that I want to do and change that. I then thought about playing around with the archways and making kind of like a mini backstage area, but that didn't go to plan either. And it's important to try these things, but yeah, there was just something about it that didn't didn't quite sit right with me. So we got rid of these. And then I decided to actually just put some bits in here that kind of worked. And again, just trial and error. Just a lot of errors in this episode, unfortunately. <laughs> Not a lot of the trials actually came off. But this looked okay, so we had this uh, nice little ramping entrance and exit. I thought about putting some steps in so that the lines could just have like an access to the stage. But because that's so low, they're just going to climb up anywhere wherever the hell they want. So it doesn't really make a difference. And those steps will probably become more of a hindrance than a help to anything. I then decided we'd put some pillars in at the back, make some of them look like they'd fallen off or uh, decreased in size or weathered down over time. The other thing I could do actually was there's some nice new world lighting pillars that I could actually use in here, but I'm not sure if I want to go too overboard with the lighting. We are going to have some stage lights on the staff entrance pointing to the stage or pointing to the middle of the habitat because I think that would be really nice. It sits in with the theatrical theme that I've now decided that I'm going for with this build which I never thought I would go for but anyway we're approaching a little showcase and I'll tell you all about this finished piece when we get to it. But yeah that's us putting our lights in and we are just about done. I had a lot of fun building this one actually it's pretty basic and it's definitely not my best work but I came back to an area that I've been wanting to come back to and I certainly think it looks better than the uh, the first like iteration of this build. There's still probably a little bit of work to do and I do intend to do that when I do my big touch-ups at the end of this kind of series. So here we are. This is our newly grown up male and his new potential mate enjoying a meal. I think it's their first date. Um, <laughs> but yeah, he's looking great. He's a uh, certainly grown up a lot from when he was a pup at the very beginning of the episode he was just approaching maturity so it's pretty cool that we were able to get it. and i think the uh, female is about three years old as well here he is just having himself a little mid-afternoon snooze in the cave i do love the lines in this game i think they look incredible so i'm really quite happy to have like a habitat it's just a shame that they have such a short lifespan and here she is grooming herself in the sun. I just love the way that like floppy little ears and stuff. I think it's really cute. So back out to the habitat itself. We're going to go for a nice little time lapse as the sun sets. And I just think it looks, it's infinitely better than the original. There's obviously more stuff I could do. And I think that rock on the stage does look a little bit forced, if that makes any sense at all. So that may get changed. I could just leave the stage. We don't really need a, a Simba moment in here, I guess. So, yeah, I think we'll maybe get rid of the rock altogether and just leave the stage. And here he is, using his scratching post. And off he goes. 
So, as always, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for watching. Drop me a like, comment and a subscribe if you want to see more. And I'll see you for the next episode of Planet Zoo. Bye-bye.